Well, awesome guys. Um, welcome. Again, my name is James. I am the content director here at Push Press. And we know one of the hot topics, um, you know, even just over the last 48 hours, um, was protecting your brand. Um, we won't get into the details of the whole, what spawned all of this, but we know one of the biggest needs is um, gym owners and business owners wanting to really control, have control of the brand. Um, and part of the process is if you come to that decision, you want to, to rebrand. Um, well, th that's part of the process is rebranding, right? And, and really owning and creating your own brand. Um, so today we'll have Nick Reyes. Um, a lot of you guys might know him already. He's just a, a name out there that everyone knows. Um, but just a little bit of background about him. He's been with Push Press for what, three or four years now, I believe, something like that. Yep. Um, he sits as our chief happiness officer. Hence the smile and the, the always very clean fade. Um, and he also co-owns what now is Kansas Athletic Club. Um, and that's what we'll talk to you for today. Um, he has taken um, CrossFit 913 and rebranded it to Kansas Athletic Club. Um, if you guys haven't seen uh, what they look like, they've, they've overhauled the entire gym and their online presence. Um, and it, it's a very strong and unified brand. And now all of their members, even the community, um, knows it. And so that's the background that, that he's bringing into today. So um, with that, Nick, did you want to um, introduce yourself and kind of what the agenda is for today? Yeah, so um, uh, once we finish introductions, we'll just kind of wrote a blog post uh, that I think everyone should have received whenever you guys registered for this. Um, I actually wrote it about six months ago, seven months ago, and we never ended up publishing it. There were a couple gym owners who have reached out um, about rebranding and I kind of sent it to them. Um, I forget the reason why we didn't exactly publish it, but this blog post was actually written from a, a combination of things that I felt that we did right when we rebranded CrossFit 913 and things that I felt like we missed and would have saved us a ton of time, a ton of headaches had I had had the forethought. So a big part of this is, learning from experience and uh, how can we help out, you know, these other gyms along the process. Um, additionally, I would say that this is probably the, uh, the long way towards rebranding. This is not a quick fix band aid, uh, change the name and, and move on. So, um, uh, there's going to be some in-depth stuff here that uh, I hope you guys get a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of benefit from. And just one thing to add, um, again, all of you guys who are in this call should have received the link to the blog post. Um, I think it'd be really handy to have that out, maybe on another screen or like on your phone or something, just to be able to reference as Nick talks through some of these topics. Yeah, um, and then Chris, you wanna intro Chris, James? Oh, uh, Chris, what, is, what does he do? I'm not sure what he does around here. That's the longest running joke, no one knows. <laughs> no, and, and I mean, to Chris's point, he does a lot for Push Press. Um, and everything, obviously, he's one of the co owners and co founders at Push Press, but he is the, the brains behind branding of Push Press. Um, and I have been on the receiving end of a lot of critique about what I do here at Push Press because it doesn't uphold the brand visually or aesthetically or whatever. Um, so he is the the ultimate authority, at least in our space, for branding, branding well and clear and concisely. Um, you may not understand him because he speaks a different language. But. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll, I'll try and speak as American as I can. Um, I've, I've been working on the American accent for quite a while now. Um, but yeah, I like to refer to it as constructive criticism when it comes to you know keeping our, all our collateral on, on brand. Um, but my background is I went to design school. So um, I'm so traditionally trained in brand. I've worked with a ton of different brands over the last few decades, huge and small. Um, I actually prefer working with smaller ones like gyms. They're just, you can achieve more, I think, and really get a bit more of a personality across. Um, so I've had a little bit of practical experience with gyms, uh, branding, rebranding, um, and developing that, um, as well as, you know, with some of the big boys as well. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So, um, let's, uh, I guess maybe before we dive into it, I want to make sure, 
I don't want to dive too much into the weeds today on whether CrossFit affiliates should be de-affiliating, keeping their affiliation. Whether you decide to keep your affiliation or not, uh, I think that if you're looking at your brand right now, one of the things that we've all noticed is that if CrossFit is in your name, you are suddenly at the mercy of whatever HQ does, right? So it really is irrelevant if they are pro a certain politician, anti a certain politician, and you service a part of your population that would be offended by one of those viewpoints, then when they make that viewpoint public, your brand is at that, whatever's going to happen is not up to you, right? That was actually our chief reason for, um, for moving away from CrossFit being in our main brand. We still have our affiliation as of today. Um, we still have uh, CrossFit classes on our schedule. All of that stuff still exists. The the other part of this or the other reason why we can rebrand is whenever you begin to offer uh, things outside of maybe standard CrossFit classes. And that was actually kind of reason 1B why we rebranded. We had originally launched a boot camp, one of these no barbell, you know, CrossFit lights, whatever you want to call them. um, And it did not see very much success early on. Um, a big part of the reason that it didn't see very much success was the name on the sign was still CrossFit 913. Uh, The facility was still very much a CrossFit facility. All of the branding was CrossFit. However, we were trying to sneak in this other thing, so to say. Um, So those were the main two reasons. The blog post covers kind of a third reason for uh, for rebranding. So just wanted to make that clear out of the gate. Uh, I think first, let's just define, uh, define branding in order to, 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 I think a lot of people believe that branding is really like your name, your logo, maybe your website, maybe some colors. Um, it's actually a lot more than that. So uh, several different definitions, I kind of blend them all together. Uh, so branding is how you create a specific perception of your business in the minds of your prospects and your customers. Okay, so that's pretty broad. Um, I wrote down some other ones. Chris, feel free to add to this. I've got logo, website, colors, tone of voice, imagery, core values, taglines, hashtags, mission statement. Am I missing anything there, Chris? Um, yeah, I mean, we could expand this list to about 50 items, but <laughs> right. it's, it's, one of, it's one of those things too is this can be a huge job um but if you if you make the scope of rebranding so big it'll never get done correct right so you got to kind of pick and choose what you're going to bite off for the initial launch and then you can and i kind of see brands as this sort of living breathing evolving things it's good to have a really good foundation but it's going to evolve over time right 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 so I like to kind of work backwards into this and start all the way with uh, defining that, that, that perfect avatar, um, that perfect client. You can, you guys can all, you you probably have, whenever I say those words, hopefully you picture a handful of members in your gym and you're like that person, that's the perfect client. We need to define them very specifically. And in the blog post, there's an entire, um, uh, kind of how to guide for helping you define that perfect client. Obviously, if my gym specializes in youth sports performance training, my perfect client is not the soccer mom, right? It's the teenager who's trying to get to college athletics, right? So defining that perfect client will help us shape the brand eventually around finding that individual that's in the marketplace. So how are we going or who is that client and how are we going to service them? is step one. Once you get through step one, you define who they are and how you're going to service them. I think a big part of what we need to do is determine why we are servicing them and what are the core values that are inside of us and our staffs that are going to allow us to service them better than anyone else. So if I have a group of coaches that only care about endurance and I have a weightlifting gym, that's obviously not going to work, right? If my core values are something that align with the core values of my ideal 
my perfect client, then I have a much better chance of attracting those clients into my gym. Okay, so starting off with, um, again, who, why, and how. If it's not in the company, in the DNA of your business, then ultimately you're not going to attract those individuals. Anything to add to that, Chris, James? Yeah, you want to, yeah, it's basically that. You want to put out the message to attract who you want to be your customer. And, and sometimes it takes um, assessing where you're at today with your current clients and sort of taking a good look at it and going, do we have, do we have our, our ideal clients in here um, or do we not? And sometimes you'll find that if the answer is no, I don't quite have the ideal clients, then yeah, something probably is off with your brand and you might need to make some adjustments. Yeah, and if you guys, again, speaking to, to all of us as being primarily CrossFit affiliates, I believe here in this webinar, um, if you want an example of where this can kind of go astray, just think about what HQ has done over the last several years and how when we all got involved with CrossFit, there was probably, depending on when you got involved in your timeline here, um, it was probably the games, the open, Friday Night Lights, very much competitive environments, regionals. And then you saw them pivot to health and you didn't make that decision. Granted, that may have been who you serviced anyways, but then you may have had these competitive athletes at your gym that were a little confused, didn't like that regionals went away. So that's why it's so important to have your exact uh, who you service, why you service them and why this is a core value identified and why it's important for you to do it at your brand level and not allow someone else to do it at their level. You can be a competitive gym, that's fine. But if you're attached to a brand that's moving in a different direction, you're going to be left out to dry. So, just one thing to add um, now would be the, the perfect time to identify who your, your um, ideal client avatar would be um, and understand that. Because right now, the entire industry, at least for, for the cross affiliates, we're at essentially our reset point or an opportunity to reset. And, and redefine who you are as a business, who you, who you represent, what you represent. Um, so uh, going back to the next point of the, the client avatar, that's, that's at the, the very basis of all of this. Yep, yeah, I, just want, I just want to add like sort of devil's advocate to the next point. Um, if you don't feel like you're in the position to bite off a huge brand change um, and you're kind of okay with just hitching your wagon to um, if it's CrossFit or whatever other brand you're, you're hitched to and you're pretty flexible and going with the flow, don't get upset easily. Um, stick with it. You know, yeah. they, they're doing, uh, you might not realize, but they're doing a ton of work for you. Um, yep. You know? So. Yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. Um, regardless, I do think it's important to go through those first two steps. Re if, even if you decide, you get through this whole exercise and you decide, you know what, it's not worth it to rebrand. And again, and we're going to maybe circle back to this anyways, but you decide it's not worth it. The first two will, will provide a North Star for your business moving forward, regardless of the name that you put on the door. Okay. So once we've defined who and how we're going to attract them, the next step is um, it, I believe it's kind of putting branding in a scope. What's it going to take for us to actually change our name and, and bite this whole, you know, initiative off. And, and, and this is one of the spots where, um, I succeeded on some levels when we rebranded CrossFit 913 and I failed on many levels as well. Um, so first thing I think makes a list and it's a list of assets, a list of every single place your logo is listed your business name is listed and you guys can read through the doc. I list out every single thing that you would need to make a list on, but it's things like my logo is in Google, my business, it's on Facebook, it's on Instagram, it's in my push press account, my website, business cards, make a list and then review it five times because you're going to miss things. And the last thing you want to do is announce this beautiful new brand to the world and go, Holy crap. I forgot Yelp. And now people can't find me. I forgot Google Maps. And now all of a sudden people are going to the wrong place, calling the wrong or emailing the wrong email. There's a whole host of problems that can come up there. So make while you're making that list, also make a add to it the things where they your logo and brand should exist. So maybe it's not on Yelp. 
and I know that Yelp's probably a terrible example. I know we all have rocky relationships with Yelp advertisements, but Apple Maps is fed by Yelp. You should probably be on Yelp. Not that you have to advertise through them, but update your listing there, right? Um, so make that list incredibly exhaustive. Next thing to do is go through your facility. For us, when we launched our, uh, when we relaunched our boot camp, one of the things, again, that we realized just in walking through our CrossFit gym was that it was very CrossFit ish. There was no plants. It was all red and black, like every CrossFit gym that was created 10 years ago. Um, there are paint scuffs on the walls. And here we are trying to attract a high income, um, you know, mostly female avatar with this boot camp. And they weren't coming. We were trying to attract Orange Theory's avatar into a CrossFit gym. So even the facility required a pretty substantial overhaul. So now again, you guys may not need it. Um, maybe your facilities are way nicer than mine was back then. Maybe uh, you're just not even trying to attract that client, but we cannot attract a client that's gonna go to an Orange Theory with a gym that attracts um, a, a muscle head, right? Does that make sense? So, um, once you've got a list of everything that needs to be updated and an idea for what the facility needs to be needs, needs to uh, needs to look like, then it comes down to, uh, is it actually worth doing for us? There was a big price tag that came along with making the facility changes and we couldn't actually afford to do the entire list. So as we looked at the items that we wanted to improve within the facility, a lot of it was remove this, remove this. This is a big line item, remove that. Okay, with this new picture that we're painting from, from a facility standpoint, can we still attract that client avatar in the way that we mapped out in steps one and two? And if can we, do we have the manpower and the resources and the time to go through this entire list and updating Google My Business and, and going through uh, several design iterations of logos and picking new colors and coming up with a tagline. Do we even have the time to do this, right? So once you have that picture in your head of, yes, we can make the facility improvements and we have the money to do so. Yes, I have the time to do new logo, new colors, new branding that's when you can actually, I think, from that point, jump into what's a name? What does a logo look like? What's, a, what's an attractive logo to this avatar? What are good colors? A lot of gym owners, unfortunately, I think right now, are going to be quick to jump directly into that last step. Name, colors, logo, without going through the previous steps that, in my opinion, are a complete requirement. Um, and if you do, you know, go ahead. You know what this is like? I was thinking about this earlier. Is the fun stuff is yeah. well to me at least is doing like the logo and what name we're going to be, and that's the stuff you're going to have the conversations to your partners about. This the challenging stuff is coming up with the core values and your avatar and some of the other stuff. And I think a lot of us aren't all that familiar. I'm guessing with doing that. Um, luckily, there's tons of resources online about how to do it. Right but it does right. take a while. And if you skip those steps, it's almost like when you get drunk and you wander into a tattoo parlor and you go like that one, I'm gonna go with that tattoo on me. And you brand right. yourself with that, with no like thought and meaning behind why you're gonna put that on your body, right? As opposed to someone else who's been thinking about it for a few months about, oh, you know, I want to incorporate this into my design and they go and, you know, talk to the artist and they say, hey, this is about me. And then the artist interprets it and, you know, gives you a couple of sketches and you go, okay, yeah, yeah, let's refine that and let's go with that one. Right. So th just think, are you the person that's going to go walk in and go, I want that one? Or are you going to put some thought behind it? Right. You know? And, and, and yeah, I would absolutely agree. It's not it's just not something you just want to dive into and just 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 roll the dice on. Um, you know, we actually had um, uh, just as a, a, a background here, maybe one other piece of advice. Um, we had an issue with a name that we that we first came up with. We were actually going to be Kansas City Athletic Club, um, and there ended up being some uh, some copyright issues, and we had to 
kind of pivot last minute to Kansas Athletic Club. And it was like in a mid announcement period. So you can talk about learning lessons, searches for uh, other names or similar names in your area, making sure you don't kind of step on any toes there. Is a domain available? Um, there, there's a lot that, that we kind of need to hash out. And again, a lot of this is in uh, kind of in the blog post and comes from uh, or is in some of the links that are in the blog post. The, the last link that's in there is actually, I think Brick did a really good brand assessment guide. So you guys uh, in that blog post, it's, it's linked in. So go through that brand assessment guide. Um, it's pretty exhaustive. I think, I think they did a, 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 about as good a job as I found, especially for the gym space. Yeah, I, I love that actually. I, I think what they did really well is they didn't make it too crazy, mm -hmm. but, and, and they didn't skimp on too much stuff. They just had like a lot of, a lot of stuff you've got to think about. Um, if I were to do it, I would, I would do about that amount of work. Right. I think. Yeah. Yep. And then, you know, I guess the, the other piece of advice here would be, you know, give yourself, um, a fair amount of time to do this. in. I mean, July one would be ambitious in my opinion, uh, depending on where you're coming from. Um, if you, I'm talking when I say July one would be ambitious. If you don't have core values, if you don't have your avatar already defined, a lot of businesses have already done those things. And if you've done those things, you've got a big advantages, a big advantage over the ones who started their gym, opened up some doors with some barbells and just started training people to do thrusters and burpees and whatnot. Um, so I would say regardless, again, you know, at least reevaluate them, but that you've got a massive head start here and what that rebranding process looks like. Um, I want to make sure that there's plenty of time for Q&A. Um, Chris, James, is, uh, is that okay if we move to taking any questions or um, if you guys have them, I think there's a Q&A button somewhere there on your side that you guys can throw any questions our way. Yeah, absolutely. There's two ways you guys can ask questions. Um, one through the Q&A button, the other is through the uh, chat. Um, so we're watching both of those. As those come in, we'll, uh, we'll answer those the best we can. Um, one thing I, I think that we didn't cover and still relates to the whole branding is, um, is how you talk about or how you refer to your business. Um, in terms of like what, what you stand for and how to communicate that, um, you know, does your, does your brand or business take on a specific tone? Um, I don't have, I'm terrible at examples for this, but you guys know what I'm talking about? Um, you know, there, there's just certain ways maybe, you know, if we shift the focus from, if we just take the example of CrossFit and um, we go with the, you know, the traditional des um, description, but now we move over into more of a kind of a holistic fitness, you know, maybe a community-based, um, maybe there's a tagline that you associate with that that would have to change, right? I think that's yeah. also something that, that um, should be on everyone's radar and should be identified. It might not be fully, you know, um, thought out and complete just yet, but just having that in the forefront of your mind that, um, you know, when you're describing your business or how, you, how your business interacts with other local businesses or even just the general population, um, that also speaks to your brand. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's kind of the, the biggest point that I wanted to get across is that it is many, many things. That's your brand identity. Um, and that brick article covers a ton of it. Um, but and, and it can manifest for your business differently than another, right? Um, like things that I think most people don't commonly associate with brand, um, they really need to be thought about, right? Like, so if I give you an example of push press, is one of our core values is um, making real relationships with people. We didn't want to be this robotic computer company that made software. Um, so all our customer success team, we encourage them to speak to people on a human level. Like we don't actually have any s scripts and, you know, we don't have the classic, we're looking into it and we'll follow up in one minute and all this kind of stuff. It's um, what we encourage is, is gifts and um and tasteful jokes and um and things like that um and we've seen like massive success from implementing that in our dna and and it, and, and i i include that as encompassing under our brand right if right makes sense yeah i mean it needs to go along with who you hire right so um absolutely um so we have a, 
Yeah, we have some questions, questions coming too. in. Perfect. Yeah. So, uh, do I recommend a brand expert? Um, God, I, I, yes, absolutely. Um, you might spend some money there, but I mean, if it's not a hobby, right? Which I would imagine if you're on this webinar, your business is not just a hobby to you. Um, yes, yes. When in doubt, hire, hi, hire a process? coach, hire a professional. I'll, I'll tell um, you why, though. I'll tell you why you want a brand expert because it's Dave, Dave Yandel's question is a really good one. Um, Cause he also mentions Fiverr in there, which I love, but um, Fiverr is great for some things. And uh, 99 designs, it's, is that like a website company or something? I think so. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I would go with someone that's had some branding experience because what you're going to get from them is they're going to ask you the, the tough questions that you have to answer. Um, so they should give you a survey to answer. Um, it's going to be anywhere from 20 to 50 questions. Um, and, and that's kind of why you have to do the core values first and your avatar first, or else you're really going to struggle through the survey that, that they're going to give you. Um, if, if they just, if you're just going to give them a five minute conversation, they're going to, going to say, I'll take it from here. You're probably not going to get a logo colors, fonts and a brand identity that kind of fits you as a business. Right. Um, so, the, uh, yeah, and, and it is, it's one of those things too. It's annoying because it is kind of pricey and at the end of it, you'll get like some super simplistic logo and you'll be like, shit, could have just gone to Fiverr to get that. But you really can't, you know? Right. You could, you could roll the dice and, um, oh, hey, Dan. And, uh, you know, get lucky with that. But, you know, it's, it's so much more than that, you know? And, and I think one of the other points that I wanted to, was really important to me in a brand is the story that goes behind it. Um, so if you, if you go to Fiverr and you get a logo, you've got no story. And, right. but if you have a story that builds up your brand, um, then you can have a conversation to someone that you meet at the bar or, you know, out of the park or whatever, when they start digging into your business. And so if I don't have access to a, um, a brand expert, brand professional, where would you suggest I look first? I always suggest you ask your existing members because you have a pool of give or take a hundred people. Um, chances are one of them might be, if not, they have a network way bigger. There's going to be someone in there. Like there has to be. Um, but there's also, there's so many now marketplaces for that kind of stuff. Um, like if you look at Fiverr, that's a commodity marketplace. Um, at the low end, but there's things like Upwork is a good one, and I've used that before. Mm -hmm. And so yep. you'll just go through, and you'll you'll find, and that typically costs a little bit more. But you'll look at their portfolio, and you'll be able to say, "Oh, I'd be kind of happy with some of this kind of stuff," and I can kind of see their process, um, and then make kind of an educated guess on that. But stuff like this is so much cheaper than what it used to be because of these marketplaces. Yep. Right. So and, on, I mean, to follow up on that, um, is there a range for what this would cost? Maybe just from the, the brand expert position, um, you know, what could you expect bottom and top end range for, you know, a, a typical gym of ours? Um, what, what could they, um, anticipate spending for um, just the design process and, and rebranding process, not so much the implementation side, cause that, that can, that could be a full build out, rebuild out like in Nick's case. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably a couple of grand. Yep. Um, I think would be reasonable to expect. You, you can also do like what um, Dan did when he rebranded Training Lab is he got like an A-level designer who works for all the big companies that kind of was like into fitness brands and, and did him a, a sweet deal because cause design, designers are typically pretty passionate. So if they're into it, um, they'll do it for cheap or you can, you know, you can buy the services and stuff. Um, James knows all about that. I, I do feel <laughs> after going through that process, you could probably find someone on Fiverr. It's like, what do we pay? Like three grand for that, for that brand, I think, or maybe five. I think it was two. Two. Okay. Yep. Well still two grand, like for the difference you get 
going from like a Fiverr person to that isn't worth it. You know what I mean? Like you can get pretty fucking good probably for like 400, 500, you know? You're talking about just the logo though, right? Are you talking about the entire brand? She did kind of the brand, but I mean, what was it? It was like color scheme, logo, lockups, right? Um, you could get the you get the technical implementation of what she did, but you couldn't get the um, full pine and all that kind of stuff. Full brand, not just gotcha. the logo. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. I don't yep. know. If, I don't know if she nailed it for you completely, but um, I, I loved her work. But I'm just saying, like, it's one of those things where like that last twenty percent of cost to value ratio kind of goes askew. You know what I mean? Right. So, yep. but I, I really love yeah. the work. Let's, uh, let's go on to the next question, which was uh, yeah. how much time and money? And I think we started kind of tackling a little bit of that there. Um, Debbie, if you're starting from a spot where, um, you know, we don't have a, an ideal client avatar, um, we don't have those, uh, those core values or the mission statement really defined, um, you know, that part's really limited by how quickly um, you can survey, you know, your best clients and how quickly you can, uh, can go through those exercises of identifying them. Uh, my personal uh, timeline was about six months, but that was really because number one, I wasn't under any pressure to do it immediately. And I knew I had this runway. We weren't going to relaunch our boot camp for several months. So I was not in this massive hurry to get it done. We didn't have the money to do the build out for a little bit. So I knew I wasn't in a hurry to get that part started just yet. Um, that was my own personal timeline. Uh, I could see, um, I could see 30 days, but again, it comes down to how much time do you have to truly sit, think, plan, and reflect on what you write down through each of these exercises. Uh, Dan, when you guys, Dan and Chris, when you guys rebranded, um, uh, Torrance training lab, what was the timeline that it took from the time you were like, yeah, let's come up with something until you actually announced T TTL. Oof, do you remember, Chris? Mm, Chris, the, well, the non, I mean, Chris was the non-owner owner of Torrance Street. <laughs> yeah. Um, it wasn't that long. It was a while. You, I feel like it was a while, though. Well, you didn't really do a full any of the stuff we're talking about. Like, there, was no <laughs> okay, core, okay. there was no core. There was no core values. There was no yeah line okay. avatars. It was more of a shortcut way to it but yeah if you if you involve a designer they're not unless they're on fiverr and they're on a 24-hour turnaround they're going to take a couple of weeks right? yeah but our our girl was like you know what is the feeling you want like she asked us yeah. really personal yeah. questions like, what, what do you want to convey like really designery like it was pro yeah. if you go fiverr you could have a logo back in you know 24 hours Tw 24 hours. hours yeah right yeah yeah so, uh, so might, that's kind of the next thing here which is uh, I feel pretty good about our mission statement, uh, core values, avatar, logo, colors, et cetera. I wasn't planning on redoing those things. I just wanted to take CrossFit out of our name. What do you suggest? Um, that could be a fiber job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that could be a fiber job. So, so here's the deal. That's the eraser on Photoshop. <laughs> right. So, so if, if, if all that stuff is in line, um, I do think it's still at least worth considering the name for SEO purposes. Um, I know Goodness. Dan was, yeah, I know Dan was big on this. Um, in fact, uh, um, there, there was someone talking about rebranding yesterday. Don't remember who it was, but they were saying like, you know, fitness is something you search for. Um, you know, don't do like something performance if, yeah. Like, because no one searches for performance, like right? Unless that's what you do. Strength and conditioning. Strength and conditioning. Like, if you look at the Google results, who searches for strength and conditioning versus fitness or gym, right? So that, um, Nick, how did you guys come up with the athletic club versus yes. fitness versus any of the other options? Yeah, so um, a big part of the reason for that name um, was that it actually, <laughs> counterintuitive, it wasn't actually through the search results, believe it or not. Um, it was the fact that we were a, um, uh, we, and we still do focus on athletes uh, for like as a whole. We've got endurance athletes, we've got weightlifting, uh, people who compete in all these in all these realms. So we wanted that to be kind of core into who we were. That was a part of our client avatar for the whole gym. Now, granted, we have different programs that center on different things as well, 
but that was um, that was one of the important parts for us to keep. That's good. I mean, so really, it comes down to understanding who your avatar was and yep. kind of aligning the name to it. Um, exactly. Because you know, typically for every one of our businesses, it would be you know whatever the title is and then some kind of descriptor, right? Um, mine would was Lincoln Park CrossFit. Um, you know, now it might change to something else. Right. Um, but there's typically two parts of that and understanding your, your client avatar will give you that second piece um, on, on, again, on what would be more searchable, what would your members and, and community easily remember and, and what they would want to identify with. Yep. Um, so think through that. And I think what we can do is also um, maybe put out some of our thoughts on how we've come up with um, you know, some of our, our, our thinking through these, uh, these naming structures. Because then we did have some discussion a while back, Dan, about the whole fitness versus strength conditioning. Um, and I think there's some logic to that that we can apply. Um, that might not be super obvious for everybody. Right, right. Um, and then what's, uh, I know we had another one up here. Um, oh, do I still offer CrossFit classes? And if so, how do you market that area of your gym without having the name on display? Yeah, so we are actually, um, I think on our Google listings, on all of the map listings, we are Candace Athletic Club, uh, home of CrossFit 913 and Epic. So if you actually do a search for CrossFit near, uh, you know, near me and you're in this area, we show up on the listing. Um, so that again, that was kind of one of those little SEO hacks that allowed us, but again, we're still affiliate, uh, an affiliate as of today, so we can use that name. Should we decide to drop our affiliate, then that part needs to be a very carefully executed strategy because we would no longer have the right to say CrossFit in any of those advertisements without having HQ come after us. So um, it would need to, we'd probably come up with a, with a name for those classes uh, that was searchable, that would be something that someone would look for, functional fitness, hit classes, whatever that, I don't know. We haven't even brainstormed it yet, to be honest with you. But today, that's what we do. All of our classes are still listed across, as CrossFit. Well, that's one of my uh, favorite hacks to doing that um, for your Google My Business, is you put your gym name and then followed by your tag name and your place name and stuff that full of keywords and you have a really long business name yep. but that google my business is just for seo so that'll yep. get you come up real quick it's not exactly. not intuitive to do that but that works um for seo purposes does a tagline work dan did you answer that i was kind of answering in the chat right okay um yeah. So it goes a little bit further than just a tagline. Like it's gotta be where you're positioning it and putting it on your website, like in your title tags. Um, as of right now, you almost want to be, I don't want to, I don't know what the wording is. I can't think right now, but you almost want to be very blatant about what you put out there. I'm trying to Google one that we did. Um, it's almost ridiculous, but it works. And it was like, uh, it was for one of our clients on the website side. It was like, Obique fitness, weight loss, uh, CrossFit, health, and and transformations, you know, personal training <laughs> in in um, I forgot what city he's in, something Texas. You know, you know, it was just like the title was ridiculous, but now he shows up on all kinds of stuff because we have right. all of those tag keywords in, yeah. in his search. Right? We can do a whole separate webinar on this. Yeah, oh, on okay. taglines, I think it's yeah. I think I think actually what's really really hard is to have a tagline that's irrelevant and make it known like what uh what deuce does right like hold the standard that's actually really tough it's cool it's a great tagline but it's terrible seo for a long time it's, until your brand is strong enough that now it's money exactly yeah. exactly well, well, there's the whole thing with it. when you really get into the weeds of seo um to if your goal is to perform the best on seo it's going to kind of stuff up your brand a little bit mm -hmm. because you're going to have to put some things on there that don't quite make sense, but they really make sense for those Google computers that are spidering your website. So there's kind of a balance there. 
Um, and so someone like me, like kind of really struggles with that SEO. I, like I understand the importance of it because if people can't find you, you can't help them. Um, but at the same time, it's kind of, yeah, it's like the hold the standard. That's a great example is like, it's cool. And that's the brand. That's what people associate with, but no one's Googling that. So it's not certainly not helping in the, in the, in the SEO side until you have a really big following. Yeah. So I just put in chat the difference between Obique Fitness's website title name and their Google My Business name. So that's like Jeez. the bottom one is the name of their business and Google My Business. But that's what Google looks to first when it's trying to figure out like what businesses are around you that are relevant to your search. Right. Mm -hmm. total so trouble. this all plays part of like a big picture. Um, and, you know, ultimately that, that's, that's what we're speaking to in terms of your brand. Yeah. Um, I don't, so just I don't, getting a good understanding of of you know what's in your google my business and your tags um but again if if we back this all the way up to understanding your, your ideal client avatar it opens up a lot more clarity for this um absolutely so do the hard work first and this stuff becomes easier because now you know what you're working with but if you're trying to solve all these problems individually without having a, a good understanding of what your base is well, now you're, you're just kind of trying to play games to, to win at each individual thing. Um, and it might not make sense co cohesively. So right. do the hard work first. Right. If you can, if you can. Um, job title for someone who's an SEO expert. Um, can you find SEO fitness on like um, Upwork or? It's expensive. SEO people charge quite a bit, so. It's just like any other creative endeavor, right? Like you can find a designer who can do something for 20 bucks or 2000 bucks and you're kind of taking a risk either way on different ends of the spectrum, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. SEO is a very like black magic thing. Yeah, I would say again, with what James just kind of reiterated, um, if you know who you're trying to attract and why you're trying to attract them, then the list that, you, that we talked about earlier of Yelp, your blog, your website, um, Google My Business, um, Facebook, Instagram, all of the different places, all the different channels, so to say, think about that all of those are, are the very, very, very top of the funnel. So if you know, that's where we know who we know how, all you have to do is put yourself into that person's shoe and go, where, what would they search? Yeah. Right. And then reverse engineer that. They would what they, search. Yeah, what are they looking for? They would search weight yeah. loss. Cool. That means my blog and my podcast need to talk about weight loss and have that in the title. Um, maybe my gym name needs to have weight loss in the title. Or again, it, it all depends on who you're trying to attract, though. Yeah. I, it, I think the thing is the thing is with SEO, there's like there's not one magic thing you can do to make your stuff found. It's many, many little things that compound. Um, and that's why it's, it is actually relatively expensive because they have, if they're good, they're going to do a lot of work. Yeah. So yeah. if you find someone for, you know, a hundred bucks a month, mm, um, you know, that Probably might not, not worth be, it. yeah. And then, you know, I, like, I love the story about how we found like our guy, Dan, how he, um, he made himself found by owning like, uh, fitness the fitness gyms keyword in LA and we found him through that because that's like that was and that was his you know hypothesis he's like if I do this then I will get clients because he's just proven that he can do that um so yeah. you need you yep. need a bit of proof proof if you hire someone too because there's a lot of like kind of crap ones out there I think so, yeah I mean um, I, I was I would say for you guys real quick to, to answer um the question in the chat I wouldn't, don't worry about SEO until you've got those things solved, like Nick and James have said. And when you do, it's probably to get it done right. Like put it this way, push press has a budget that's bigger than a gym. And even us were like, damn, SEO is kind of expensive and we don't really know what we're going to get out of it. So for a gym, <laughs> it almost doesn't make sense. Right. Yep. Um, but, but people like us, like come to us and talk to us because we can help you at least try to understand it. Or we can like our websites team does do this for some of our clients. So kind of to, to round the conversation today um, and to put Nick and Chris in the spot, uh, one of the things that we like to do here at Push Press to, to move quickly is to put forward um, an MVP. 
minimum viable product. What would you guys recommend is the, the MVP for rebranding in today's climate? Like if you were, if you had a, a, a week and limited budget, what would the top, you know, three things that you would do to, um, to kind of push forward a rebrand? If I had a week? I, I mean, if you had a, a very short, <laughs> uh, limited amount of time. Very short, limited amount of time. Um, and resources. Yep. Then I go, who, I, I start with ideal client avatar. I make sure my mission statement and, and my core values are aligned with that. And then I make my assets and, 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 and hire the logo designer, right? Um, logo colors, font, get those things off Fiverr, um, and then rock and roll with it. That's if I'm limited and, and trying to sprint through this thing. I just truly don't believe that you can skip um, who you're talking to and, and who you are is, yeah. is just as important. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd agree with that too. I would probably add, because you're going to struggle if you just sit down in a meeting with your, um, with your other founders and try and hash out your core values you probably want to use some tools to make that easier for you. And the easiest thing is surveying current members. Um, you know what you've they love gotta, about you. Yeah. You, you've got to do that. So there's certain things in this process that yes, it's an extra step, but it's going to stop you sitting around looking at each other, twiddling your thumbs going, what are, what are our core values? Or just like, copying just someone you. else's core values are even worse. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I mean, and, and quite honestly, like that's, that's a, that's a great point. If you, whenever, whenever you meet with those members, again, those perfect members, the, the, the person who you envision whenever I say that term, just a couple of questions you can ask them. How did you find me? Why do you love it here? Um, what's your favorite thing about being here every day, right? And like, you'll get a lot out of just even those three things. You'll, you'll probably honestly get five answers that are all kind of resonating the same thing because those are, you're already exemplifying your core values and they're yep. experiencing it, right? Even if they're not on paper. Yep. Yep. Awesome, guys. Um, so let's wrap this up. I want to be respectful of everyone's time today. I know we covered a lot of information. Um, and what we will do is we will make this recording available. Um, everyone who is registered, we will send this back out to you guys if you want to reference it later. Um, we also have planned some follow-up documents and material um, to expand on more of the topics that we covered in this call. And so look for that to those to kind of drop over the, the next uh, week as we kind of um, polish those up and put those together. Um, so with that guys, I appreciate everyone joining in today. Um, wish you guys all the luck. Um, and again, if you want to reach out to any of us, you've, you obviously um, have exposure to our channels. Just reach back out to any of us if you want to bounce up any ideas. Um, we are more than happy to help you guys push for us plan or not. Uh, we're about the community. So anyway, we can help. Just reach out uh, and we will be here. All right. Thanks, guys. And we will catch you on the next webinar.